things theology, all things theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta give doxology to God hollow because this is how we do it at all things theology. Yo, grace and peace, guys. Welcome back to another episode of All Things Theology, where I'm your host, K-Dub. And today, I want to talk about charismatic chaos. But before we get into that, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not, and as always, click the notification bell so you can be aware when I go live. So yes, guys, like I said, I want to talk about some charismatic chaos. Um, types of ministries you should avoid, types of preachers you should avoid when you're looking for a sound biblical church. <laughs> There are many ministries that operate like this, many pastors who preach like this, right? Where the uh, service, the uh, the teaching, if you want to call it that, will be used to control people's emotions, right? And once, and you can see this with when it comes to cults, with any uh, uh, things outside of religion, once you can control someone's emotions, you can get them hype up on an experience, you can really get them to do anything, um, anything you want. Let's look, for example, on, um, you know, with people like Jim Jones. Jim Jones manipulated people, um, got them really devoted to himself, and was able to do um, anything he wanted. Uh, people like Marjo, uh, you know, who was heavily influenced in Pentecostal, uh, you know, circles, and was able to get the people to give, <laughs> you know, just um, do whatever he wanted, essentially. So, there are many pa pastors, preachers, who operate in the same way, right? Where the whole service is just the you know we got to get the keyboard going the whole time and what i'm not saying is that we should not give uh, ad accurate praise right we should have a, a lifestyle but we can't be confused that praise is only when the music starts right when when the music going that's praise and worship but then like when we're just opening our bible doing teaching without the music that's not praise and worship that's not true biblically speaking all all of life is to be praise and worship we should be people spe specifically uh speaking to christians that are people that, yes, have no issue. We should have no issue with having a response, having an experience. But it's not apart from the truth. I've said this once before. Experience apart from truth is just idolatry. It's not what the Christian, it's not what the Bible teaches. So we're, we're not to just be looking for experience. One, two, three, come on. into trances rather uh the the christian life in itself is an experience that we we live in light of the truth that the bible teaches there are many people who want to live in this right this fresh rhema right we want the fresh experience right as if the old uh rhema is um, not enough no we are to the, the bible should be sufficient in all things you know i don't, I don't need a new voice from god the old voice is perfectly fine. It's, it's sustained Christians for thousands of years. You know, we don't need anything new. Oftentimes, you've you probably heard someone say things like, well, I just want to hear God speak. And it's like, they're not reading the Bible. It's like, well, if you would read your Bible, you would hear God speaking clearly. You know, oftentimes people are looking for some existential, uh, you know, experience where it's outside the Bible. And those people are prime picking for false teachings because they're looking for something that's more than scripture than what scripture teaches right i want to read a text just to kind of get to what i'm saying isaiah chapter 30 verse 10 really gets to the heart of this it says who says to the seers do not see and to the prophets do not prophesy to what is right speak to us smooth things prophesy illusions and honestly that is what the that that can be summarized with the culture at large and in, in american christianity they want a people that is not going to tell them what god says in his word but they want something new they want to prophesy smooth illusion the smooth things 
things that make them feel better but are actually not biblical and true. Another thing I would warn against or encourage you all when looking for a sound biblical ministry or, or pastor or preachers is, is the Bible properly the center of, of the church? When I, what I mean by that, is God's word central in who teaching what, what, who Jesus is and sin and things like that? Oftentimes what you'll see with ministries is that the word is not the central. Now they may quote the word, but it's used to promote some existential experience or, you know, oftentimes what I saw was, you know, they'll, they'll use a verse of scripture and then go in story time for the rest of the sermon. That's not to be done. What people need is to be uh, exhorted from the word of God. Second Timothy 316 goes into that. It should be the word of God being the root of the church. A question I have, where are the men, the women of God, who's got, not going to tolerate all the flopping on the floor, all the screaming and hallucinations, seizure-like movements, and say, where is this stuff in the Bible? Who's going to be the Bereans and say, give me the word of God? That's what we should be looking for. In a sermon, is Christ exalted? Was the scripture used in context? What many people want is an experience over against the word of God. For many people, it doesn't matter if it's in the word of God. They, they want to feel, you know, uh, feel better you know, they want the encounter with God outside of scripture. And we should be men and women who do not tolerate that. Show me this in the Bible. The charismatic movement is largely the reason the church is in the mess that is in today. In, in virtually every area where church life is unbiblical, you can attribute it to the charismatic movement. In virtually every area. Bad theology, superficial worship, ego, prosperity gospel, personality elevation, all of that comes out of the charismatic movement. And I've often said, if these signs and wonders did still exist, do you think they would be given to people with bad theology?